In this video, we are going to learn how to draw a trajectory line for a physics-based projectile in Unity. Hi, I'm Peter, and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. For this video, I have prepared a simple cannon shooting project where I can aim and shoot a bullet or a cannonball out of my cannon. But the issue is that without a trajectory line, I'm kind of shooting and hoping that I will hit a ship although they are pretty close to me, so this is not that bad. But the issue is that I'm not able to see or predict where our bullet will land. So I would add to it a trajectory line so that it is easier for me to shoot those ships. Now, to visualize our trajectory line, we can use the line render component from Unity. But we are also going to need a custom script. By the way, this project is available on my Patreon, the link will be in the description if you want to grab it. So first, I have this Canon object in my project and I will want to draw a line from this Canon, from the muzzle of this Canon, uh, in the direction where the uh, cannonball will fly. So I will select this Canon, select this plus icon, I will select the effects and I will select this line, which contains the line render component by default. Now we can select it in the scene view and we can drag it up to see it better. And let me press F to focus on it. It doesn't look that great. So first thing that we need to do to tweak the look of it is to go to our projects tab and we are going to create a new material for this line render. So right click here, select create and I'm going to select the material. Now the new material will be created. I'm going to call it line render material. And I'm going to select in the inspector shader, I'm going to select universal render pipeline since I'm using this pipeline for this project. And I'm going to select the particles unlit. If you are using the standard rendering pipeline, you should find the same shader, but not in the universal render pipeline category. Okay, so now I will select my line and I will select in the inspector somewhere in the middle, there should be this materials tab. I will drag here our line render material here. And now it is a line. So that's great. It looks much better. Now, in addition to that, I can select my material and I have created this texture that is a line with the uh, outline for it so that we can better see the line render. So I will select my uh, trajectory line folder, line render, and I will drag to the uh, surface input of my material, my texture to the base map here. And here we have in the scene view a much more visible line render. Now, if your line render is a bit thicker than mine, you can select your line render component uh, in the inspector and change the width because probably you have width of one. Just set it to be 0.1. I find this width to be pro appropriate for my project, although this is something that you want to tweak. The next parameter that I want to set is this uh, above the materials tab there is this use world space since I will be using world space coordinates to set the trajectory line of my cannon so I'll set this used, uh, world space to be true since now those points specified in this uh, point array are going to represent the world coordinates so now as you can see our line render has disappeared and is probably much lower where there is 0 0.000 in the unity game world okay so this is it for the setting of the line render now we need to have a custom script so i'll select my folder trajectory line right click create a new c sharp script let's call it trajectory line okay great let me paste first the fields that we are going to have obviously we are going to need the reference to the line render so i have a serialized field private line render line render next i'm going to have the line segments integer value so serialized field with the min value of three so minimum i want to have at least three line segments private in line segments this will allow us to smooth our trajectory line for it not to be that jagged because we are basically creating a line from point to point so the more point we create the smoother the line will be and last thing is a serialized field with the mean value one private float time of the flight probably it should be time of flight. I have set it to five. This will be in seconds. What we need to do is we need to calculate the position of our projectile when it is flying towards its target. 
In our simple example, we can assume that only the gravity force is applied to it beside the start velocity or the force that we apply to the rigid body when we shoot our projectile. So for the simple simulation, we can use this trajectory formula to calculate the position of our uh, projectile at each point when it is traveling on its path towards hitting the ground or even going further because in our case we have no idea if it will collide with something or not. This basically is the main difference between this example and our case. Here we can calculate the time of the flight of this object that is shot here. But in our case, since we have no idea if it will collide with something, we need to assume how long it will fly. This is our five seconds time. I'm going to leave the link to this article in the description of this video so that you can get familiar with this equation if you want to. So that's the point of this time of the flight parameter. We are going to calculate the trajectory in terms of the next five seconds of the flight of our projectile. This might be something that you want to tweak in your own project to draw a shorter or a longer trajectory line. Next, I'm going to create two more methods. And here are the methods. First one will be a public method void show trajectory line that will take in a vector 3 start position and a vector 3 start velocity. As you might recall, those are the parameters that we know. Next, depending on the line segment's value, we are going to calculate a time step. So basically, per each time step, we are going to calculate the new position of our projectile that we are going to base on the equation that I have shown you just before. And this will be equal to time of the flight, so our 5 seconds, divided by the line segments. And this basically means that the more points we calculate, the smoother the line will be. Next, we are going to have a vector 3 array, line render points equals calculate trajectory line, start point, start velocity, and we are going to pass here the time step. So let me show you this method. This is the bulk of the code that we need to draw our trajectory line. At the same time, this is basically the same equation that I have shown you, just presented as a C-sharp code. So we return here a vector 3 in this method, and uh, this method is called calculate trajectory line. It takes again the start point and the start velocity as vector 3, as well as our float time step. So we need to first create a vector 3, an array of vector 3s, line render points equals new vector 3 array of the length of line segments. This is just for efficiency, we could uh, very well use a list here. Now, the first point obviously will be the start point, so the line render point 0 is, is equal to the start point. Next, we are going to loop for i equals 1, since we already have the first point, i less than line segments, so this is the number of line segments, so how smooth our line will be, i++. plus plus. And basically, what we need to do is we need to calculate the time offset. So based on our time step, we are going to calculate the position of our projectile uh, per each time step in the future. So we need to know how far in time in uh, advance we want to calculate this position. So this will be the time step. So per each segment, we are going to simply multiply this time step by i, and we're going to get the time offset value. So this is the simplification of the equation that I have used to create it in C sharp. First of all, we need to calculate a vector 3 position progress before applying gravity. So progress before gravity is equal to the start velocity multiplied by the time offset. As you might recall, if no force is affecting a body, the body stays in motion and the same force is applied to it. So in our case, this is the start velocity and we are going to multiply this by the time offset. Now, obviously the gravity is affecting our projectile. So we need to uh, calculate how gravity will affect it and how it will modify its position. So vector 3 gravity offset will be the vector 3 up, so the up direction, multiplied by the minus half, and this is from the equation, times the physics.gravity.y, and we should multiply it by the uh, time offset to the power of 2, so I just multiply it 2 times. And this will be the gravity offset that the gravity will apply on our uh, projectile when it is moving. So as you might imagine, now we need to put both of those values together. So we have this vector 3 new position, and basically this is the same equation that I have shown you. This will be the start point, so 
since we have the offset from the start position, we're going to start, get the start point, plus the progress before gravity, and we need to subtract from it the uh, gravity offset, so gra how gravity has affected our uh, projectile, how it has dragged it uh, downwards. So now the line render point at the, at the position i will be our new position that we have calculated here. Now, I'm sure that my ex explanation isn't perfect. Make sure that to check the Khan Academy if you want to understand how the trajectory path is calculated. But in a nutshell, this is the c -sharp code that should calculate it for us. So we need to loop for each line segment and we need to return our vector3 array to our show trajectory line method. So now to keep our old trajectory line while we calculate the new values, we are going to set line render that position count equals line segments instead of setting it to zero and we're going to set line render set position to our new array so set position stakes in the vector 3 array so that's what we have returned from our calculate trajectory line method okay great so last step is to call this method somewhere so let's go back to our project if you are enjoying this video so far be sure to click the like button share this video with others or click the thanks button to support the channel. I would really appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, great. All I need to do is select my object that I want to have the line, uh, the trajectory line script on. So this will be my canon and I will drag here my trajectory line script. Okay, I haven't saved it. So now after saving, I can see the fields that I need to fill. So I need to have the line render uh, reference in our case, this is the line that we have created previously, so I will drag it here as a reference, and this is the trajectory line script. Now, I need to call the method on it to start drawing the line. So I'll select the canon shooting script that I have created previously, and I will edit this script. Okay, great. Now, this canon shooting script basically is responsible for shooting the cannonball when I press the spacebar and I'm not waiting, there is no delay between the shots. So in this case, I'm just creating the cannonball and I'm setting, I'm setting this rigid body and adding to it the force. Constantly, I want to draw the trajectory line. So I'll need to have a reference to the trajectory line, a script that we have created previously. So let's create a private and this will be a serialized field. And we are going to create a reference to the trajectory line. And I'm going to call it trajectory line. Okay. So in the update, we need to draw our line. So we are, I'm going to call trajectory line. And we had the show trajectory line. And what we need to do here is we need to pass the start point. I have created the serialized field private transform muzzle, which is basically the muzzle of my cannon. So I'm going to use this muzzle. And I'm going to pass the position since this is the start point when I want to start drawing my trajectory line. The next step is to calculate the start velocity. So what we said in the add force. In our case, the velocity is simply the muzzle.forward direction, since this is the direction of movement, times the shot force. In this case, I'm setting it to be float equal to 30. I think I have increased it in the um, uh, script, in the inspector. But basically, we need to calculate the same thing. So muzzle.forward, which is the direction, times the shot force but that's not all because the rigid body has also the mass since the cannonball has a mass we need to apply appropriate force to make it move far enough to hit the ship so we need to uh, divide this uh, muzzle forward times the shot force by the mass of the cannonball i have saved it again as a float value in my cannon shooting script this is the velocity that we want to pass our show trajectory line method and this will be it now again if i slide down you can see that here when i press the space bar i'm instantiating the ball i'm getting the rigid body i'm setting the mass of the rigid body and i'm adding the force here i do not need to include the mass because the rigid body knows about its own mass so it is applying to this force the mass of the rigid body and i'm using the force mode dot impulse to make the ball fly in the direction where i am shooting Okay, and that's basically it. I'm going to save the script and go back to my project. Great. I'm going to select the Canon, the Canon shooting script, and I'm going to just drag here the trajectory line 
reference and now we should be able to press play and see the result okay and here i am inside the game and i can uh, place my uh, rotate my uh, cannon up and down and left and right and i can see that the trajectory line is being drawn i'm going to press spacebar and as i can see the bo the ball is following this trajectory line because we have included all the forces that can affect it and of course in my case i can hit the ships and i can uh, damage them so basically this is much easier to aim at those ships if we can see the trajectory line i have mentioned that this trajectory line that we are drawing here is dependent on the line segments value in this case we are calculating 59 segments we're starting from index 0 so this is 60 uh, points and in our case we can modify the number of segments uh, in the trajectory line script so if i continue playing and if i modify the uh, line uh, the number of segments to be for example five as you can see maybe i will turn to the wireframe mode as you can see our line here is very jagged because we are basically calculating point where our projectile will be with a bigger time step that's why this is jagged if i'm going to select the cannon and i'm going to increase the line segments value to be 200 we're going to get the perfectly uh, smooth line uh, where we can follow how our bullet will be flying but this will cost us some performance that's why we can limit the time of the flight so for example we can set it to two or one as you can see now where when it is one it is much shorter if this is two it is a bit longer let's take a look at it it is uh, probably enough for this purpose so basically those are the parameters that we can set if i set it to be 60 it is quite smooth line so it is enough for us to have a smooth trajectory line and we can control the length of it okay great if you want to learn more about making video games in unity check out my video courses the link will be in the description thanks a lot for watching see you in the next tutorial